Welcome back to Civil Wars. I'm William Spaniel, and this lecture is on breaking the conflict trap. So last lecture, we put on our Admiral Akbar costumes, and we found out that civil war is a trap. War destroys your economy, and countries with destroyed economies are more likely to fight civil wars. So this creates this vicious cycle where I'm fighting more wars, destroying my economy, and fighting more wars, and destroying my economy, and so forth. Now, the book Breaking the Conflict Trap was written by the World Bank or funded by the World Bank to figure out some solutions to this problem. And so the book actually does come up with a few policy recommendations for the international community, things that the international community could do to reduce this problem and allow developing countries to break out of this conflict trap, become developed, and grow their economies. And I'm going to go over a few of those in this lecture. So let's start off with the obvious choice. The obvious choice is intervention. If war is the problem, war is doing all of that dirty work by destroying the economy, the solution is to end the war. And if you're a big, powerful country, perhaps you can send in peacekeepers into that war, pull the sides apart, and stop further inefficiency from happening. So yes, because a war was going on, the economy is going to be somewhat destroyed, but at least you can keep the country from destroying itself any further. Now, there are a couple of obstacles here. First, why would a country want to intervene? Well, that's something that we're going to discuss later on. In fact, we're going to talk later on why more countries are not willing to intervene in these sorts of missions. And the other thing that might be an issue is what would an intervention do to actually pull the sides apart? What can a peacekeeper do that the sides within a war can't do to get peace where there wasn't peace before? That is another topic that we're going to come back to later in this course. Another option for the international community is to attack the funding of the rebel group. So the major source of rebel financing is natural resources, and along with that, selling the future rights to those natural resources. So if we remove the ability for these rebel parties to fund their rebellion through the natural resources, then we would expect to see fewer rebel groups and also the existing rebel groups to dry out. One thing the international community has done recently in this regard is establish the Kimberley process. So if you know much about diamonds, you're probably familiar with this Kimberley process. You're probably also familiar with how many of those diamonds that you see aren't necessarily coming from the world's safest places, especially if you've seen the film Blood Diamond, right? So you have a bunch of huge diamond mines in Africa, some of which are farmed from exploitive ways or farmed in exploitive ways by rebel groups who are essentially using slave labor more or less to pull the diamonds out, sell those diamonds, and then use that diamond sale to fund their rebellion. Well, this Kimberly process is designed to establish a way to figure out whether your diamonds came from a legitimate source. So this is like a chain of command sort of thing where if you get a diamond through a legitimate process, it will be Kimberly certified so you know that you're getting one of these legitimate diamonds and you're not getting one of these blood diamonds. So the idea here is that any diamond that doesn't have a Kimberly certification is likely a, a blood diamond. And if you're a domestic consumer in the United States and you're seeing one of these diamonds that doesn't have the certification, well, you need to be thinking to yourself, if I purchase this, I might actually be helping someone kill someone else. So maybe I shouldn't purchase this. That's going to shrink the demand of those stigmatized blood diamonds. And it is going to lower the prices of those blood diamonds. And if you have lower prices because of the lower demand, you're also seeing less funding for the rebel group. Now, another weird thing that rebel groups try to do is to sell the rights to natural resources they do not yet control. So you can imagine that you're a rebel group in a country that has a lot of oil fields and you're trying to get funding for your war, one thing that you might try to do is go to an oil company and say, you know what, we don't actually have the oil fields yet, but once we do, if you will give us some money, we will then give you the rights to the, that oil field once we capture it. And so you can raise the money like that, and then that's going to help you win the war. And then once you've won the war, then as long as you're willing to hold up to your word, maybe you are, maybe you're not, but supposing you are, then you'll give the oil field to the company that you sold it to. So one clear thing to do to solve this problem is to just issue a ban. Say if you're in the United States and you're an oil company in the United States, the U.S. government can say if you do this, well, you can't. We're going to levy some sort of fine or tax against you to prevent you from doing this. That ban is going to decrease the funding to the rebel groups and, again, have the same effect of shrinking the number of rebel groups out there and decreasing the amount of civil war. Another thing that's important, and we talked a lot about bargaining in this course, is making sure that the bargains that you're getting are, in fact, going to work out. 
Now, there might be an issue where I make a bargain with you, and then it's unclear whether I'm actually upholding that bargain. So I might say I'm going to give you 10% of the tax revenue, and that might make your separatist group be okay with that and not want to actually engage in a war for your own independence. But then you might have this concern if you're that separatist group that I'm not actually giving you 10%. I'm actually giving you maybe 8 or 7%, and you don't really know that because I'm just writing you a check or handing you money. And so it's hard to see exactly what percent you're getting. So one thing the international community can do to help out with this is to verify that these mutually preferable deals are in fact mutually preferable. That's going to build trust on both sides. And if I'm that separatist group and I know in fact that I'm getting the right deal, that deal that is mutually preferable, then I'm not going to fight over it, right? I'm going to be happy because I'm getting this deal that's going to leave me better off than if I fought a war. And the transparency is going to ensure me that that deal is in fact the deal that I thought it was. And the last thing I'm going to cover today is aid. So one solution might be for you to just throw money at the problem, right? If we're having a country that is rebuilding after civil war and we're concerned that that bad economy is going to lead to another civil war, then one thing that the international community can do is just go in and try to rebuild the country. They can throw money at the situation. Now, this is, in fact, a very common response. The problem, though, is that the international community can be capricious about this. So in order to solve this problem, you need a long-term aid. You need to get money today, you need to get money tomorrow, you need to get money years from now. And the international community instead responds by just throwing money at the problem immediately. So right after the Civil War ends, then money funnels in. But then a couple of years down the line, everyone in the community forgets that this war went on or does, just doesn't care about it anymore because there's no longer the political will there because no one is dying recently. And that money gets cut. And when the money gets cut, well, now you're not going to be having that strong revitalized economy or you're not going to be revitalizing at the same rate as you were before. So if you're going to try to solve this problem by giving aid, you need to make sure that this aid is going to last over the long term. So these are some of the tips that Breaking the Conflict Trap, the book that the World Bank produced, gives to try to help the international community figure out how to resolve this development problem. And that is Breaking the Conflict Trap for you. Hope you enjoyed this. Hope to see you next time. Take care.